Let us stand to worship God. Happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Because my eyes are fixed on your commandments, with my whole heart I will seek you.
Please join me in the prayer of confession. Creative God, you have called us to be your people and claimed us for service. We confess that we have not lived up to your calling. We have been timid and frightened, forgetful of your presence and power. We have not used our intelligence or relied on your strength. We have neglected the ministry of your spirit among us. God of mercy, forgive our neglect. Cast out our dull habits and overcome our lethargy. You have chosen and claimed us in baptism. Give us divine intelligence to choose Christ's ways in this world. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that we may become your witnesses. Help us to rely on your gifts, grace, your calling. Let's take a few moments for silent confession. Okay. The Declaration of Pardon. Hear the good news. God was in Christ recalling, recoiling the world to God, God's self. God's mercy gives, us, gives hope to the weary. Friends, believe, believe the good news is still good. of the peace. The good news is to all of those who are near and far away. Because Christ loves us, we are members of the household of faith. We are one in the spirit. We are family. The peace of Christ is alive and at work in this congregation. The peace of Christ be with you. Please greet your neighbor. Good morning. My name is Iwanosa Marvelous Osuzua, and today I will speak about an amazing person that inspires me, Justice Kintaji Oyinka Brown Jackson. Justice Jackson was the first black woman to be nominated as a justice to the, the United States Supreme Court. She was born in Washington, D.C. on September 19th, on September 14, 1970, but was raised in Miami, Florida. She went to Miami Palmetto Senior High School and got her high school diploma in 1988. She also attended Harvard University for undergraduate study in law school. Before she became a United States Supreme Court Justice, she served as a district judge for Columbia from 2013 to 2021. She also was the vice chair of the United States Sentencing Commission from 2010 to 2014. 
Justice Jackson's achievements inspire me because I am always reminded that my race, gender, or social culture background are not barriers to achieving my goals and missions in life. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we listen to the reading and proclamation of your living word, may the things that you reveal to us and the thoughts that shall be shared with us dwell in our hearts and stir us to actions of love and justice. Amen. Our first scripture lesson will be taken from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 through verse 20. The page on the Pew Bible is 186. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I'm commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you're entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today, that you shall certainly perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Loving the Lord your God Obeying him and holding fast to him, for that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord saw to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The word of God for the people of God. Our second scripture lesson comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 through 48. Listen for the word of God. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you. Do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who who persecute you so that you may have so you may be children of your Father in heaven, for he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. 
is a God, and he always will be God. I must tell you, God is a God. He don't never change. God is a God. Two thousand and twenty two was the year of Emmett Till. The movie Till came out in movie theaters and on live stream. It's an incredible movie, well worth watching. His mother's courageous decision to hold an open casket funeral to demonstrate, quote, the brutality of the kidnapping, torture, and murder of her son. One of, was one of the courageous acts of the times. With photos published in Jet Magazine, the images emboldened civil rights leaders and workers. Jesus was speaking to bruised and battered people when he told them to love your enemies, to pray for those who persecute you. When someone tries to hurt you, turn the other cheek. When someone tries to weigh you down with their burdens, carry them a second mile. When tr someone tries to take the coat from you, give them the shirt off your back. Turn your hurt and anger and outrage into creativity. Mamie Till Mobley did that in 1955. She turned the tables on those who wanted to bury the truth underground exposing the violence that had been done to her son. She took up power and confronted her oppressors with a liberating choice. She literally turned the other cheek and her decision changed the course of history. Is it a fact of life? Or is it a statement about sinful human nature that hatred and greed will never go away? The powerful 
will never let go of power unless compelled to do. Injustice is never going to retreat as long as injustice turns a profit. There's still so much racism and violence going on in our society today. It should make us all angry. But what do we do with our anger? Should we rob and riot, loot and destroy? Jesus will not countenance it among his disciples. Anger used wrongly can destroy and tear down others. Anger expressed wrongly can accelerate into more hostility, divisiveness, and polarization. But when anger is used rightfully and prayerfully, it can expose a situation and uplift the truth before us. One scholar writes of this passage Jesus is teaching about what is required to build a faithful and healthy community. I believe Jesus' commandments are not political as much as they are spiritual and theological. And none of these teachings can be accomplished without an infusion of God's gracious power helping us carry them out. Do good to those who hate you means to focus on what's good for them. Pray for those who wrong you. Once you pray for someone with a sincere heart, you're united with them in Jesus Christ, and now they're sisters and brothers. You can't hate someone for whom you're praying. Jesus tells them it's all about love. Love makes us engage with people we would rather not choose to work with. Love makes us open our hands to others and release those clenched fists. Love makes us prioritize those who oppose us and causes us to invest and care for them. It's love that uplifts when others want to put down. Love that includes when others want to exclude. Instead of yelling at each other and blaming each other and criticizing each other, then walking away from the table, instead of an impasse of negativity, kicking the can of our problems down the road, love seeks a creative solution of reconciliation so that we can go forward together. This is the year of Emmett Till. Just this summer, they were cleaning out a Mississippi County Courthouse basement, and they found an unserved warrant for the arrest of Carolyn Donham back in 55. The sheriff was asked, why didn't they serve the warrant? And he said, she had two small children. I didn't want to bother her. Justice thwarted and denied. In August, the grand jury decided not to indict Carolyn Bonham, even though she wrote in a memoir and told a reporter that she lied about Emmett Till's involvement with her. Justice denied then and now. But we have some good news. In December, Mamie Till Mobley and her son were granted the Congressional Gold Medal, the highest honor given, recognizing their courage and valor as true American heroes. The medal hangs in the Smithsonian Museum of African American History. Justice was affirmed. And did you know that after a hundred different attempts over the last a hundred years, the Emmett Till anti-lynching ordinance was passed. For a hundred years, the legislation had died in committee and been voted down, but just this year, it was passed unanimously. Now the law allows that any crime that results in death, bodily injury, or harm will be considered an act of lynching and is to be prosecuted as a federal hate crime. Justice come at last. 
When we look back on 1955, we can see a demonstration of scripture happened right before our eyes. Because of the witness of Mamie Till Mobley, we continue to march for Emmett Till. His name is listed in every protest. The quotations of Mamie Till Mobley are considered prophetic words, even to our generation. Just as God can change hearts and minds, we believe that God can change our society and our culture. We still look with a long eye toward the progress of justice, knowing that history occurs every day right before our eyes. Jesus' words still are relevant today. Learn to love your enemies. Learn to pray for those who persecute you. Do good to those who harm you. In this way, you will prove to be children of your heavenly Father. Amen. who made all things. Do you believe and trust in God's Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world? Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God?
Please be seated. On behalf of the session, I present Ida B. Hunter Gill to be received as a full active member in the church. Through the water of baptism, God calls us to belong to Jesus Christ and gives us gifts of the Spirit and fruits of the Spirit that help us grow in faith, hope, and love. Through faith, God creates a spiritual fellowship where souls are nurtured through the give and take and weekly worship, study, education, and service. When we join a church, we make a commitment to honor Christ in every way we can, joining together with others in the mission and ministry of the church. The Lord Jesus Christ is at the center, connecting us to others to create a community of hope. The constitutional questions, we're glad to have Ida, who is actually an ordained elder from her church in Helena, Arkansas. Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Do you trust in him? I do. Will you be his faithful disciple, obey his teaching, and follow his example? Will you be a faithful member of Second Presbyterian Church, giving yourself in every way? And will you seek the worship and fellowship of the church wherever you may go? Will we, the members of Second Presbyterian Church, welcome Ida into our community of faith? Will we get to know her as a friend, love, care, and pray for her on her faith journey? Will we grow to incorporate her gifts and talents in ministry? Will we work together with her to be one in Christ, to live out the peace of the Holy Spirit in the bonds of unity? If so, raise your right hand and say, we will. We will. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for this congregation, the local expression of the body of Christ. And thank you for being, bringing Ida into our church. Bless her faith and her commitment. Use her to further the work of your kingdom. Fill her life with joy that she might find your enlivening grace in her time here together in our congregation. Bless her in every way. We thank you for Ida, in Jesus' name, amen. Ida, you are now a full active member of Second Presbyterian Church, a member of the Body of Christ and the Church Universal. Do everything to the glory of God. Give thanks to God and welcome. Welcome all who worship with us this morning here in the sanctuary or online. If you're visiting for the first time, we ask you to sign a blue visitor's card found in your pew, place it in the offering as the offering is received with your email. We will sends you news and notice of upcoming events in the life of our congregation. We are a praying church. In your pews is a yellow registration card. Please note any prayer requests that we might walk with you and pray with you. And we have a Zoom prayer circle every Thursday at noon. We invite you to join us. Today is Super Bowl Sunday. And our young people are collecting donations of uh, canned goods and boxed items for our lunch bag program. We invite you during the week to bring your items by the church. And we're still continuing our coat and warm clothing drive. 
um, please uh, clear out your, clean out your cupboards and closets and bring your items by. And I think we should say a special thank you to the children and youth for their work in Super Bowl Sunday and collection. Remember, our men's core group breakfast and Bible study continues each Saturday. Next Sunday, the deacons will be holding a meet and greet. Uh, as you enter the church in the narthex, there will be signs and lists to meet your deacon and introduce yourself to the deacon and others who are part of your group. Please join us next Sunday. And finally, Christians want to respond to the disaster and the earthquake in Syria and Turkey. In your bulletin is the website for Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, and we invite you to give online. You can give through the church, but please give generously in response. In our joys, we give thanks for the progress of our elder Howard Tiffin, he had a six-hour surgery this past week, and he's doing well in South Bend Hospital. He anticipates going to a specialized care facility in Indiana for therapy in the coming week, and then return here to Chicago for additional rehabilitation. Howard and Jane send their thanks for the many prayers and expressions of support and love from their church family. We continue to keep them in our prayers. And now let us go to God with all our prayers. Let us pray. Eternal God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we praise your name above all others, giving you thanks for the gifts of life and love. Your divine mercies are fresh with the morning. And you have promised us through your Son that every time we pray, you shall incline your ears to our prayers. As we now bring our supplications to you, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, we pray for our congregation, the Second Presbyterian Church. Grant unto us all things necessary for our spiritual warfare, and our mission in this, our city. Strengthen and increase our faith. Remove all hindrances to the advancement of your truth and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within the fold of your holy Catholic Church. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Loving God, we pray for the people of Turkey and Syria whose lives are devastated by the earthquake. Be present to bring comfort, relief, shelter, and human kindness. Shield the people who suffer. Console with those who are bereaved. Prosper the profession of relief. Strengthen the work of emergency teams and shine your light and hope in the midst of despair. Lord, in your mercy. Good and gracious God, you invite us to recognize and honor your divine image and likeness in our neighbors. Enable us to see the reality of ethnic hatred and racism and free us to cherish and uproot it from our society our world, and even ourselves. Help us to take the lead and the initiative in turning injustice to justice, hostility to peace, ethnic hatred and hatred of racism to love and equality. Lord, in your mercy. Caring God, we pray for people known to us and close to us who need your heavenly touch this morning. We pray for those battling cancer and other serious health conditions. We pray for those making important health decisions. 
we pray for our families. Protect, guide, and provide for our, our loved ones. We also pray for those going through a difficult period of time, that in their struggles, they would find relief and grace from you. And let us now mention to God by name all those for whom our prayers are desired. Grant these our petitions, O Lord, for we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now share in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
God of inspiration and instruction, we pray that you will keep working upon us this week. Open us to your transforming purpose and power and help us feel your presence at work in the interactions of each day. And in our own time and place, help us become agents of change through the values that we embody. And help us become your ambassadors, Lord Jesus Christ, because the world needs your love and justice like never before. And now we dedicate these gifts to feed the hungry, these gifts to aid the ministry of your church. We give these gifts and dedicate them to your service and for the good of our community. Through Jesus' name we pray, amen. is conversion. The changes God wants to make among us are spiritual and theological. And so may your heart and mind be open to going beyond yourself and being transformed so that you may love your enemies and so love everyone as your neighbor and believe that change is coming and our change is just around the corner. Pray for it, hope for it, work for it, believe in it, and it will come to pass. 
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit, and the companionship of each other go with us to bless us as we seek to bless our world. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you.